guys, so welcome back to my channel. Um, it is Sunday the 19th of April, I forgot what month we were in then. Um, and I'm going to do a video which I have been meaning to do since January. Yeah, and we're now in April and I was supposed to do this video in like January, February time. Never mind, that's typical me anyway, so you know, you know what we're used to anyway. Um, so this is a slightly different setting, I'm not in my room. <laughs> I am actually in my hallway and it sounds really echoey because my parents have painted the door so there's no curtains. And um, yeah, it just sounds a bit echoey. Um, so yeah, um, we're about to go outside. This is why I'm in my hallway. Because <laughs> I'm going to introduce you all to my car. Bit of a weird thing, I never thought I'd be saying that. Anyway... <laughs> I'm going to um, be showing you around my car. I got a car for, I wanted to say for my 17th, but I didn't get it for myself. I'm 17. I was 17 on the 5th of December, if you didn't know. And I was desperate for a car for my 17th, but my parents didn't, I'm going to, this, this is going to sound like spoiled bitch alert thing. Listen and just hear me out. So my parents didn't buy me a car for my 17th. And... Uh, but now uh, I put a port. I have a job, so I've been able to buy my own car. So I'm going to show you guys my car, show you around it, and yeah, basically tell you what I think about it. I've had it since January. I haven't passed my test yet. I was aiming to pass my test in April, May time, but coronavirus hit, and I'm not allowed to take the driving test. So yeah, fun. So let's go and show you the car basically okay so i'm still outside the front of my house because the sun was right in my eyes and it was really bad lighting um so i do own a fiat 500 and it's got those really awesome keys that flick up i'm like so happy it's like literally my favorite thing and i have my house keys on it obviously have a crocheted unicorn that my mum made me and my boss made me a little rabbit out of pearls and wire so they're, they're my car keys, meet the car keys. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm going to show you my car. I really apologise for the really bad lighting because the sun is in the most awkwardest place for where my car is parked. Obviously, I'm not going to show you the back of my car properly or the front of my car properly because I'm not sharing my reg plate with everyone. <laughs> so yeah, so allow that. I might insert some photos of the front and the back and then I'll just scribble out the reg if you... if if I can't get the right footage without I'll show you my reg so yeah let's go <laughs> so this is what I mean so this is my car Ta -da! I don't know if you can tell I mean it's dirty I have cleaned but if we look it has like this pearly sort of effect you can't really see that well it looks better when it's being driven and it's got the pearly effect but yes my car is a petrol um, these are its rear lights. And this is what the back looks like. And then this is the other light. And obviously the other side looks exactly the same. It is only a three door. And then we come to the back. My neighbours are right here, they're gonna think I'm insane. So yeah, this is this is my car. <laughs> I'm literally jumping in whilst I'm editing to say that. I forgot to put in any information about my wheels and my tyres. My wheels are 16 or 15 inch, I can't remember, but they're al alloy wheels. And yeah, they're really, really good wheels, really good quality, and they're really good, got really good tread on them and everything. Um, I am also looking into buying some alligators, I think they're called. And it's a little like rubber thing that clips in between your tyres and your alloys. And if you basically hit a curb or like something like something that would impact your tyres and your alloys, the alligator should take the impact and hopefully your alloys will be okay. Obviously, it protects against certain things but not other things. It just depends on how hard you hit something or stuff. It's just extra bit of protection. But yeah, that's something I'm looking into getting. Okay, so I'm now inside my car. I prob the audio is probably gonna be really weird because it's gonna be really echoey. But that was my outside of my car, obviously. Uh, okay. So yeah, a few of you have probably already seen my car if you have me on social media. Excuse me. Yeah, so if you have me on social media, you'll have probably already seen my car. Uh, some of my family, close family have seen my car and some friends have seen my car as well. But other than that, I've kept it quite on the down. Oh, those two little sparrows. I'm so distracted. It's so hot in here, oh my God. So yeah. That's my car. It was clean and it rained. 
so it's dirty again. The weather's been really weird here. I don't know if anyone else in the UK has noticed, but it's really hot and dusty, and then and then it's like raining. So then my car gets wet and horrible and muddy and disgusting, even though it hasn't been taken off my drive. But who knows? So yeah, that was the outside of my car. As you can see from the inside, I have some really cool seats. So if I just not that down a minute so you can see that i have two toned seats so it is a leather top and then a, a top at least ombre um <laughs> a tartaned bottom and i absolutely love the seats the seats are literally like one of my favorite parts of the car sounds weird on the front two seats i don't know if you can see if i angle it like that on the front two seats we have 500 written on the leather in fabric and yeah and then we have a leather trim all the way down following the bottom of the seat i don't know if i'll show you you can see so that's just the passenger seat next to me um so yeah the interior is white and what's the word uh, okay we're gonna call it plum okay the color of the car's black plum because i can't think of the actual name that the, the, the car dealership called it so anyway so it's white and plum <laughs> Um, so yeah, my steering wheel is leather, which is absolutely amazing. And so it's hot. As you can see where the sun is, it is very, very hot to touch. And I don't know how I'm going to be able to drive. I'm going to have to purchase some leather driving gloves or something so I don't burn my hands. But yeah, which is one downfall. If you wear fake tan and makeup, white doesn't mix with orange and skin coloured stuff same goes with anybody anyone driving a car with a white steering wheel you'll probably understand is that you sweat everyone's human we all sweat we all get dirty grimy disgusting hands it shows up on the steering wheel which isn't great um i have this special coating on my car on the inside and outside it's a williams racing coating and it's basically on the outside when you wash it or when water and stuff goes on it it comes straight off and it, it it's fine and it, it does that and i have a special free gift bag that came with it all which i can show you um in a bit but yeah and then on the inside i have the special coating on the fabric and all the leather and all the interior so if i spill something sticky anything to say if i have an energy drink and a knock here it leaves a really sticky substance normally hopefully i haven't tested this theory and i don't really want to test it just in case but if I do knock an energy drink or something in my glove, in my glove box, what? in my car, um, then it should just wipe straight up and not leave a sticky res res uh, residue. I think that's how you say it. I'm not that sure. But yeah, I'm getting really hot. I need to open a window or something. I don't know what's better to open a window or not. I don't know. We'll stick to opening a window at the moment and we'll see how it goes. Okay, so what next to talk about this car pros and cons see it's really comfy the one bad thing about my car on the inside is the leather steering wheel i love the leather steering wheel but one to the fact that leather it gets really hot i don't know if it's the same with a normal one i don't i don't know i'm not a car expert this is my first car so how am i supposed to know but okay besides the fact that it gets hot because i'm guessing that happens to all steering wheels um that the fact that is that it's just white and it's just a little bit impractical but we can't help it. I mean, I, I like the ones with the black steering wheel, but to me, the white just looks better with the interior because I have seen exactly the same car. It was just had a black steering wheel and it just did not look right. The white definitely looks better. Um, yeah, so I have a Tango Apple uh, air freshener. I'm just going to do what my mum suggested me to do and that was to wrap it around again. If it reaches, there we go, that's better. Um, so yeah. Um, I do have a dash cam. I have the Net Base 5 522GW. It has an inbuilt Alexa and SOS system. Um, it is really, really good. I've downloaded the app, so I've got loads of footage on there. So, yeah, because dash cams are really useful thing. If you don't have a dash cam, I'd highly recommend the dash cam. Because if you're ever in an accident and it wasn't your fault, oh god, I sound like one of these adverts. If you were in an accident, it wasn't your fault. Um, so if you were in an accident and it wasn't your fault, then you have the proof to back insurance. It'll help with your insurance um, 
insurance claim that's the word but also if you've not noticed if you like read the news and stuff like i do I, i'm 17 and i read the news what <laughs> um if you see on stuff like oh like a cra an accident or something and it goes police are appealing for dash cam footage it's also a really good thing for that i do not have a rear facing camera at the moment but i think it's some that was just a dash cam turning off if you heard that noise um I am going to probably be getting a rear-facing camera once I've passed my test, which isn't probably great, I should probably get one now, but you know, it's just in the fact that if someone, I don't know if it's true or not, but quite a few people who we know who have passed their tests in the last couple of years said if someone crashes into the back or front of you and they know you've just passed your test or they know you're a learner, they will try their very, very, very best to frame you and to make you seem like you were the one that did it wrong because you've not long just passed or you're new to driving or you're learning still and it's just their way of being like, hey, it was their fault, they don't know what they're doing, uh, why have you passed them, like, they should get their licence taken off and we're like, we could probably drive better than you because if we've passed our tests recently, we're driving to test standard, not, oh, I do what I like because I've been driving for God knows how long, sorry, little ram, it truly really frustrates me, it's like, my poor instructor, he has to sit there and listen to me ramble on about how people can't drive nowadays and he's like, I agree, I agree, so like, yeah. Okay, people are looking at me like, she's some weirdo, is she on drugs? <laughs> she's talking to herself. Anyway, um, so yeah, that that's my little thing about dash cams. Highly recommend a dash cam if you're going to do one. If you want, I can do a little dash cam uh, uh, thingy because my dad and my mum also have dash cams and we all, all three of us have three different dash cams. They're all net based, but they're all three different thingies. So if you want me to do a little video on that, I can do. But remember, I'm not a tech techie person I'm, i i know tech to vote i need to know it too but ow other than that i don't really know but yeah enough rabbling about dash cams because that's nothing to, well, it's kind of, you know what i mean it's not the car you guys want to know about the car you've come on this video to learn about the car so let's talk about the car so another thing that i quite like about my car is you can probably see this weird netting thing that looks completely different to the rest of my car it is a sunroof. It doesn't open, but it's a sunroof. I'm going to show you, but some birds pooed on it, but I'd still show you anyway. I don't know why I did an accent on that. So this is my sunroof. It's not huge, but it's quite big. It's kind of unusual for a car nowadays to have a sunroof. I feel like people are looking at me. Yeah, it's kind of unusual for a car to have a sunroof nowadays because it's not a very big popular thing. Like most cars either have a convertible car like it's not really a sunroof is it what's it called is it like oh, i can't remember the name of it but it goes up here i'm sure of it but i'm just gonna call it a sunroof it doesn't open my mum's old car was a toyota yaris and hers was tiny and it you just, 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 just it was a 2002 plate and it, was a, just, just, and it opened my dad has one of these he has two of these because it's cars and it's cash car so it's a lot bigger so he has one of these in the front and one in the back and they both have like the things that come across but yeah uh, so yeah the, his is a lot bigger so he has one of these and my mum has an Audi A1 and she doesn't have one at all so <laughs> yeah uh, but yeah so that's that um, so that's really nice because it kind of brings a lot of light what I noticed was sitting in some small cars because this is a small car it is classed as a small car it's a Fiat 500 and if you've seen them they are small but they are big they look small but we were all surprised like my aunt my uncle my cousin my grandma my granddad my mum, my dad, and me, we were all surprised with how much legroom you actually get in a Fiat. Like, they look really small. I'm a small person, so it's not really a massive issue for me. But my uncle's quite tall, my granddad's quite tall. And my mum and my dad are kind of tall, but not massively tall. And, and my cousin's quite tall, actually, as well. And they were all like, wow. Like, my uncle and my cousin both sat in the back, whilst me and my aunt were in the front. And they were shocked at how much legroom they actually had in the back there because it doesn't, it looks like you're sat with your knees up like this, but you're really not. You can actually, I mean, it's not oodles of legroom. So if you're mega, mega tall, it might not be the best suited car, but you do have quite a bit of legroom. And it's quite shocking, really, because I didn't expect that. Um, but yeah, basically, my neighbour feels all weird. Um, Another thing that I was going to say was, that was a thing about being tall, if you're tall it can probably be a bit difficult to get into the back if you're not 
if you're all legs and not much flexibility because this there is a three seat three seater it is a three door car so the front two seats so the passenger and the driver's seats both ping forward like i demonstrated earlier i can demonstrate it to you now so if you see so yeah there's a little black handle here you can't really see it but you might better see it until you can no you can't there's a black handle on the sides of the seats and they push the seats forwards like the back forwards and the whole seat can slide forwards and backwards and clicks back into place like that i didn't want to seem like a weirdo because my neighbors were outside so i just put my with up so yeah so that's the seats um i would show you that but yeah we're going to move on to what the actual interior buttons and gears so this is my gear stick are we going to focus are we going to focus there we go so we have five gears and reverse so reverse is where you literally just flick this up and then it pulls it across and down so that's how i get my car into reverse and then the first first second third fourth and fifth is all like normal i'm guessing these oh, these buttons are for my windows my back windows do not open they are literally just glass but my front two windows open and it also being a small car it does actually like cool down and warm up quite quickly sorry how smoothy that is but yeah so that turns on this is what my panel looks like so here here tells me what my speed no it doesn't <laughs> that's a lie here tells me how um economical i am being and you're meant to be driving roughly around the between the 150 mark 100 preferably so just make sure you're driving at the right speed with the right gear this has the time this has the mile per gallon that it's taking this is how much mileage my car has done this is my speed limit obviously it's zero I wondered why that guy was driving really slowly then. He really scared me. The temperature and the date and the miles I've got left until I run out of petrol. Here is my petrol gauge here. So I've got quite a big full tank because it's not been off the drive. This is the coolant of how cool my engine is and everything like that. And I'm pretty sure that is how much revs I'm giving. I think. I think that's it. I'm not 100% sure. I'm not an expert again. Here's a close-up of my steering wheel. So my Fiat is a 2015 lounge, so we do have Bluetooth, so I have controls here, so I can turn my volume up here, I can mute and I can do assistant call, I then have this up and, oh, I can't mention I've shown you, the up and down bit here, and then answer and decline call here on my steering wheel, so that's just basically that. Here are my controls for my wing mirrors. So yeah, and then the door handles on the front and the passenger are both the same and they're just these little like thingies like this. My neighbour's got to open my window again. Here are my systems for cooling down the car. So I have my obviously my window screen, my my face, body and feet. This is my aircon. This is to circulate it around the car and I don't know if you can see. Oh dear, it's windy. This is how cold the temperature is going to come out of the vents and this is how my fan speed so I can alter, alter, alternate that. Then if we come up to here, this is city drive. I have it turned off at the moment. If I turn it on, it says city on, city off. Basically, city mode is where if you're driving in, a, it's really good for cities and towns, obviously, given the name city. Um, but if you are driving between 0 and 30 miles per hour it means the light steering is on i don't know if i turn it on i can show you so look how light my steering is obviously it's not going to go anywhere because it's not the engine's not turned on and then that's how it's really harsh to do the steering there so it helps glide but obviously because i was still learning i was getting quite lost in my steering wheel because i'm quite used for a tent steering wheel so i've turned it off for now but i will try and gradually introduce myself back to doing it but yeah, that's really cool. Obviously, this is my hazards. And these are my fog lights, I am pretty sure. We're pretty sure they're my fog lights. But we're not sure. <laughs> but yeah. Here is the smart bit. So I'm going to turn this on. I'm probably get done for music. There we go. So it logs on and it says fear. I'm so sorry. The screen is so smeary. Let me just try and clean it a bit. There we go. 
Okay, so when we come on, it shows up what radio stations I have and everything like that. So I have my radio, I can browse, I can change from a dab radio, I have the time, and I also have Bluetooth. So I can go onto media, and it was, it's connected to my phone, so my phone is connected. It's not even like plugged in or anything, it is literally just done from Bluetooth. Um, but I can, because I have, if it focuses, I have an aux port and a USB port too. This is my handbrake, by the way, just thought, and I have two thingies. I need to take that out because that doesn't even work. I have two cup holders in the back and I have two cup holders in the front. I have a cigarette lighter which is plugged into my dash cam which is up here. And that is my rear view mirror. Mirror. I do have a light and a mic here too. But yeah, back to this. So I have my radio. I then also have a sat nav inbuilt on here. I ain't going to show you the sat nav in full deal because I don't want you to see where I've been. Ooh, can't see what I'm doing. Then I have my phone, so obviously if I want to call anyone, I can call people. And I have this one called Apps. Apps isn't what you think it is. It has the outside temperature, the trips, the compass, and you connect. So it's just casual stuff, really, to be honest. This is obviously the volume. I can turn it on or off clicking that button. This is just to mute it. This is for my, mainly for the maps, so night or day mode, so if I want the bright screen or dark screen. Not really explored what that is, and that is just a browsy thingy, so I can just twist it and it browses stuff anyway. So, yeah, that, that's basically that. So that's that. So I'm just going to give you a quick little tour. Okay, so my mum called me and I just went for my lunch. I think I finished talking basically about the inside of my car. I'm pretty sure, apart from just these bits. So, yeah. I have two... Um, sun visors on the pa on the driver's one that is literally just a plain sun visor there is nothing on the inside of it and it does unclip like that so you can do that but yeah I just got a plain sun visor I do have a little pouch so if I want to stick like notes and stuff in there I can and then on the passenger one it has about the airbag situation and it has a little mirror on it and a little light above it too which isn't too bright but there is a light under the mirror I will show you now so there's the mirror and the airbag thing, and then here's the light. It just goes like that. And it looks like that with the airbag thing. And then here's mine. It's just a plane one with that. So I've basically finished talking about the inside, I'm pretty sure. So yeah, we're gonna go and look in the boot as a normal person would do. Oh, one other thing I'd like to say about this car is I don't know if other people who own a Fiat, let me know. But if you own a Fiat, if you have this handle here, this is the handle to alter this bit of your seat. I don't know, I don't know if I do it, you can see. So you can push the seat back or you can bring it up, basically. So I don't know if other people have it, but it's so close to my gear stick. I thought I was going to keep grabbing it. Sometimes I have caught it and grabbed it instead of the gear, um, gear, um, handbrake. But it's not actually that bad. It's okay, but it's kind of quite up there and out there. I know they couldn't really have anywhere else to put it, but it's kind of a bit in the way. Another thing I also forgot to show you, so I don't know if you'll be able to see. Yeah, you can. I have a little cute pouch here too, which is quite cute. I don't know what, I don't know what to put in it. I sometimes put my driver's license in it. But yeah, other than that, uh, that is pretty much it. Um, yeah, I've got my normal, normal appliances. So I've got that. That I can also, I can higher and lower my steering wheel, but it can't go in or out, so it only go up and down. And yeah, another cool few things about my car on the inside whilst we're sat in here is that I can also do this thing where. Sorry, I'm getting really hot again. Where, um, where I can actually set um, a speed limit on my car. So it won't stop me from going over that limit, but I can set a speed limit. So then when I do go over that limit, it will beep at me and be like, Oi, what are you doing? Like, you go on both 70 miles per hour or something like that. Things in your car. Um, so yeah, there is stuff like that. Like obviously, I'd set it to a reasonable one, like 70, 
something that I wouldn't go over the majority of the time, hopefully, because I'm not a speed merchant, so I won't be doing 17 like a 30. So yeah. <laughs> but um yeah, I don't I don't know if that's a cool factor or not, but to me it's quite cool. <laughs> um what else does my car have? It also has parking sensors on the back. So if I'm reversing into a space, it just beep at me like a crazy little person. Like beep, 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 beep. And you're like this far away from something. But you know, they're so sensitive nowadays. I'm like, <laughs> but yeah, I kind of like that. It's quite cool. If I do get a rear camera put on here, I can also connect it up to my little sat navy thingy. My little screen on the front here. And hopefully have it into a reversing camera, which will be also really awesome. Um, What else can I tell you about my car? Hmm, I had loads of things in my head just then gone straight up gone i just really love it so i'll just give you like instead of trying to find crits with it i'm just gonna basically come out of it i love this car it is amazing it's really good response the fact that he's only had one previous owner owner <laughs> owner before me is amazing it is in such a good state i have obviously have a few chips on the bonnet and i have a bit of like a chip on the wheel arch on that side or that side i can't remember which one at the back but you're gonna get that with a car like it's not gonna be spotless this is car was this car was born in 2015 apparently this car was made in 2015 and it was first driven on the roads in 2016 so this car was around from october 5th uh no more than 9th of november 2015 i only remember that because it was my sister's birthday my sister wasn't born in 2000 you get the gist her birthday is the 9th of november this car was made on the 9th of november it wasn't driven until january in 2016 because i've done my research about this car but yeah, this car has been on the roads from 2016. We're now in 2020. It is doing a superb job. It's not, it only failed its MOT once and that was due to just a light, a light, I think. I'm pretty sure it was a light. But it got fixed and it's fine. I was pretty lucky when I got this car also was because I got this car on the 28th of December, 2019. And I don't know why I just said it like that. <laughs> and basically, um, the car had had its MOT on the 10th of December and it was overdue its MOT when it got it done. So when it went, when it got to the garage, well, I think it was at the garage longer than that and then they realised it had been overdue its MOT. So then they did an MOT. It failed it that time. That was the only time it failed it and it was for a headlight and they fixed it and it passed it again on the 10th. So yeah, I was quite lucky on that. Um, and then also when I bought my card, part of the package, I could get it serviced for free that's why i got the williams racing thing if i got the williams racing thing i got a free service on my car which it needed so i didn't even have to pay for an mot or a service when i got my car so that's really good the only thing i had to pay for was road tax and it was only 20 pounds yeah the road tax on this car is 20 pounds a year and i pay it in january so it's not bad this car i think when i bought it it was six thousand four hundred and something yes that sounds like a lot but I pay my dad in monthly instalments every first, third, I think. Every third, third of the month, I think. I'm not sure. Don't hold me to that. I mean, we're not going to nitty gritty about this. I just pay my dad £90 a month towards my car for five years. So I don't I think that is pretty bad. £90 is nothing. Well, it is something. But for my car, £90 a month, it's not that bad. Uh, my job does pay well though so to me 90 pounds is only two days worth of work and that's it i've got the money and a little left over so to me i only have to work two days in a week there you go i've got my month my month's worth of money to give my dad for my car and then we're done my job is normally a weekend job so i work every other weekend like every weekend but alternate days so one saturday one sunday one saturday one sunday sort of thing so i only have to work one Saturday and one Sunday, so the first Saturday and Sunday of the week, of the, of the week, of the month, and I've already then got the money to pay my car, so I'm pretty lucky in that aspect, I think if I didn't have my job that I have, I would not be sitting here doing this video to you right now, but yeah, <laughs> but yeah, I'm so lucky, I'm really happy with my car, we did kind of jump into it, I pestered my dad for ages to go and look at the cars, and finally gave in, we went and looked, we went to Car World Supermarket in Peterborough, but I am sure they have other centres around. They have a website, so you can go and check their website out. They are really, really good there. 
I read the reviews online and the reviews were a bit hit and miss. They said they weren't grey after they got, after you got your car and stuff. But when we went, they were amazing, absolutely amazing. So you walk in, it's a big, big place. You walk in and um, they go, it's like, hi, hi, just casual conversation, you know what I mean, just being friendly. And they're like, are you looking or are you coming to buy, uh, are you looking for a car or are you coming to collect a car? And we're like, oh, we're just looking, thank you. And then they give you this sheet of paper and they said, all the cars outside are locked. I'm like, I should work there, like literally. All the cars outside are locked. Um, so write the version of the make on this piece of paper with a pen, they gave me a pen as well. And uh, bring, uh, bring the paper back into one of us, any of us who are around here, and we'll go and get the keys for you and you can go and have a look inside. So we did. So I looked at this one online previously, so I already went bearing in mind knowing about this car. And there was a cappuccino one. Now, don't get offended, car. Don't get offended. I don't know if I was feeling. But I have always had my heart set on a cappuccino Fiat 500. I have loved them since the day Fiat's ever walked the earth. Okay, that's a bit of an exaggeration. Ever since I saw my Fiat, my Fiat 500, I was like, that's the car I want and I want it in that colour. Don't get me wrong, I love this colour too. This was like my second or third favourite colour. I was hooked on the cappuccino, mint green, light baby blue colour and this colour. So, it was a win. I got one of my top five favourite colours. So, can't please everyone. I mean, the cappuccino one is quite rare and I think this one's quite rare as well because I've only seen a couple of the same colour car as me, but I'm not sure. But I don't really care. All I said to my parents <coughs> was, is I didn't want a normal colour. And you're probably saying, Holly, that this colour is kind of normal. But, like, you know what I mean? Like, quite a lot of people have white cars. They have red cars. They have dark blue cars. They have, you know, you get the gist. I didn't want an ordinary colour. I wanted it to be out there. Although, sometimes I do relate this as red. And it's like, it's not red. It's plum. <laughs> or maroon. <laughs> it's like a purpley red, okay? Chill out. Um, but, yeah. So, I was kind of lucky, but we found this car but like i was saying back to the whole story thing so yeah we looked at this car we looked at the cappuccino and we looked at a voxel adam in green and then finally we tried this car so we went over to it we unlocked it we looked at it my dad even got in this car because he couldn't believe he didn't believe me and my mum that there was nothing wrong with it we're looking in front so funny smell that's okay there's no mold it looks fine, looks on the outside, it looks fine apart from the occasional little dint, but it's a 15 plate, it's going to have dints, it's not brand new. And we're like, wow, this is a pretty decent car, there must be something wrong with it, there must be. My dad was adamant that I wasn't getting a car that day, he was so adamant, he was trying his best to find a way for me not to like this car, for him, well, not for him, for him to not like the car. So anyway, we took it out for a test drive. And because obviously I've not passed my test, I'm on a provisional license. I wasn't allowed to test drive the car, which most of you might be sat there thinking, oh my God, are you insane? You, the car is for you. You didn't test drive it, so you didn't know what it felt like to drive. What happens if you bought the car, then drove it and realised you didn't like it? Bit of a risk, I know, but we, we did it anyway. So my dad test drove the car because my dad is the one with the most driving experience in my family and the fact that my mum hates test driving cars anyway. So <laughs> it was only down to my dad. But it was probably best that my dad test drove it because he was the one that was always going to be driving my car because he's the other person that's insured to drive my car. My mum isn't. Um, so, yeah, he test drove it. And the good thing with them is they hold your driver's license back at the shop so you can't take the car. But none of them come with you. So you can put the car through its paces. Absolute paces. Go for it. And my dad liked that because my dad wanted to find something wrong with it. So we took it, and look, so it was in Peterborough, we took it along the dual carriageway and everything, and it was really good keeping up, it didn't, mm, cracking some alarms going off, um, so it didn't, it was really good with like, lane controls and wind and I don't know what all this is about, but yeah, it was really, really good with stuff like that, um, and then we took it on the back road to do like a loop round, don't ask me, I'm not, I'm near Peterborough, but I'm really bad with directions, I don't even know like direction around my own hometown, so don't ask me. Then we took it down like this little road, like to loop back round to the cent um, to the shop. If you need to know, the shop is near. I want to say it's near Breton, but I don't really know where Breton is, so don't hold me to that. It's near Go Outdoors, basically. So if you know where Go Outdoors is, 
you have that you come off the dual carriageway and you have a little roundabout you keep going it's the first roundabout if, if you keep going to the second roundabout you go to go outdoors you've gone too far but you will see because there's a massive sign saying car world supermarket written on it and it's there but basically yeah anyways um so yeah we should go down there and my dad's like right okay i'm gonna brake really sharply because he wants to test the theory that if you brake and take your hands off the wheel it stays in a straight line bit risky because we had a dike either side of us but you know living life on the edge so he did it but he obviously had his hands here just in case it didn't live up to the expectations and it did he braked really really sharply and took his hands off the wheel and the car kept a central line and it was really cool <laughs> and my dad was like putting this car through the absolute paces and i felt so bad for it and when he got back he was like i'm really annoyed and we're like why and he's like i can't find anything wrong with the car i literally can't find nothing wrong with it and he's like do you like the car and i went no <laughs> he was like oh and I was like I love the car <laughs> I literally love the car and my dad was like oh no so we take the car back we get his driver's license back and everything and we sit down with the guy and my dad sits there and he thinks for a bit and they were really good and he's like right I'll let you guys think for a bit I'll come back in a couple of minutes so he left us for about 10-15 minutes to think and talk I sat there in silence because I didn't want to feel like I was pressuring my dad into getting me a car so we sat there and sat there and sat there and he went okay mate you got yourself a deal so my dad put down a deposit i think it was about 900 pound deposit or something like that or five i can't i don't actually remember how much the deposit was i think i was that much shocked that my dad just agreed to buy me a car that i was not even paying attention then to after what happened so yeah he put the deposit down on the car and he paid i think he paid the tax when we bought the car yeah he paid the tax when we actually came to collect the car um, because on their systems they are really good so you can hide, buy the tax and then you just they do that at the very beginning when you go in to get the car they, you, you put the tax through and then by the time you finish all the paperwork and everything like that to the final checks of the car you come back and they have a little screen tick to say your tax has gone through the car is now taxed so that's what happened so it's pretty cool uh, but it looks like he's about to come and join me in my car <laughs> but yeah um, so yeah they are super good so I highly recommend if you want to look for a car go there they've got loads of cars to choose from small cars big cars sporty cars convertibles you name it they probably got it there so a little bit of a shout out to car world supermarket I give them a really good review I haven't reviewed reviewed them on the on page on the um, internet but this is my review for them now but no they were really really good and I highly recommend them the only one bad thing that we had with them was um, my dad wanted to contact them for some reason I can't remember why before we bought the car so yeah my dad wanted to contact them and he couldn't get hold of them for a while he found it really difficult to get hold of them so yeah that's literally the only bad thing about them Other than that, those guys just looked at me like I was a complete idiot. Other than that, the place where we got the car from was really good and the play and my car is really good. So the last place I've got to show you off my car is the boot. Now the boot is pretty good. Oh, I'll probably explain this in the boot anyway, but the two back seats as well are both separate, so they can both go down, they don't go down together, they can go down one or both, you know what I mean? They're like not joined together, so they're two separate seats, so they can go down and be let down. As um, we found some Fiat, so that one, they didn't even have headrest. Eh. <clears throat> I've been talking for too long. Start with that some of them didn't even have headrests in the boot, in the boot, <laughs> in the bag, and um, some of the seats were actually joined all together. So if you wanted to flat, like flat pack the back, they were both going down. It wasn't one or the other they were both going down i can put both of them down or i can just have one or the other one down but yeah that's really cool and another thing is not that it's important to me right now because i'm not planning on having a kid for another at least five or six seven years maybe ten <laughs> is that they do have eyes to fix in the back so if you do have a kid or you know for, i do have family members who have kids though so if i was looking after their kids and taking them out for the day that would be the only handy thing that eyes to fix will have for me but yeah basically that's that's that so that's another really good thing about the car it also has like a family not that i'd really fancy trying to get a child in the back with two seats like this but you have to do what you can do but yeah that is i'm going to put that across to keep it cool in here 
but yeah that is basically my car i am really happy with it i highly recommend a fear if you want it even though people say it's the basic bitch car and uh, like when people go oh what car you got i'm like a fear 500 and they're like oh <laughs> it's a bit like yeah <laughs> so people do take uh, the mick out of you yeah the people do take like take the mick like mm, it's fear 500 basic car and i'm like it's a cool car I've got my dream car and everyone's like don't get your dream car as your first car because if you crash it you're going to be sad and I'm like I know but I really wanted it and to be quite honest I think to my parents they're like I have really expensive taste and the fact that I wanted a Fiat 500 and it was only £20 road tax don't hold me to that not all Fiat 500s have £20 road tax just to be aware some are 30 and some are 100 and something yeah so don't hold me to that not all of them are £20 but mine was um but yeah <laughs> I literally love it and it, it is really good it's a really good car it does what it needs to do I mean I do fall out with it sometimes I mean I've stalled it a couple of times because you need to rev it a little bit more than in my instructor, instructor's car but I'm still learning so it's not really down to the it's not the car's fault it is my fault just purely because I'm still learning and taking my foot up the clutch a bit quickly or not revving it enough to give it enough oomph to go or I've actually got it in the wrong gear, which I've done quite a few times, actually. I've tried to set off in third gear thinking I've put it into first. But we all make mistakes. And I'm pretty sure people who have been driving for ages still stall it and still probably accidentally put it in the wrong gear. Okay, they probably don't put it in the wrong gear because I used, used to... Put it. But yeah. I mean, for a first car, this is brilliant. It's a perfect first car. So if you are looking for a first car and you are interested in a Fiat them i do recommend them they are really really good they're really really robust and really sturdy and they are amazing but yeah this is kind of like an introdu introduction slash reviewing the fiat 500 but yeah i just want to say you would love it there is one other downfall to a fiat 500 that you should be aware of when purchasing your fiat 500 you don't really think about the petrol or the diesel cap well i didn't anyway and it was a huge shock to me when we bought the car and we went to collect it we knew we'd have to fill it up because they're not going to give you free petrol they'd literally give you the bare minimum amount of petrol they could so we had the joys of trying to figure out how on earth you open the petrol cap because you have to use your key it is a very complicated procedure when having to fill up your car with a when you have a fiat 500 so you have to obviously turn your engine off because you're a petrol station so you turn it off you get out obviously you open the petrol car then you have to get your key and you put your key in you have to turn the key one way i think i've not actually done this yet my dad's always tried to do it for me i do need to start watching youtube clips on it because you know it's kind of important so when i'm past my test i'm not like going dad you need to come with me to fill my car because i don't know how to take a pedal cup off i think from what people have told me is you put the key in and twist that what could twist the key one way and pull turn the cap the other but it's not that simple because the cap's on a plastic thing so i end up getting tied in knots around this plastic like thing that keeps the cap on so yeah it's a very complicated procedure so it is complicated but that is like one of the smart the biggest things i hate or the only thing i hate about this car is the petrol car and it's a nightmare absolute nightmare when you come to fill your car up it is a palaver <laughs> but yeah that is the only other that's the bad, that's the only bad thing really apart from the wide steering wheel but the wide steering wheel is literally not that bad i'm more concerned about i don't know how to actually fill my car up because of the petrol car i mean i know how to fill my car up i know how to fill a car up but like i don't know how to do that but yeah um another thing actually that's kind of bad is when you flick the bonnet up i'm not going to flick my bonnet up because i i, I i'm just not going to do it <laughs> when you flick your bonnet up when you're trying to fill the wash um, the screen wash up it is in a really really awkward place so if you do have a big bottle it's kind of yeah i recommend you get in a funnel to pour the liquid into the funnel to pour it into the liquid thing that's what we found was the easiest thing to do that is just another thing but if you are really curious about it then i can do a separate video about flicking my bonnet up and like talking you through the bonnet i don't know or yeah i can send you a photo or something but yeah because i did watch review videos and i don't think anyone actually really covered anything really under the bonnet like that 
which we weren't really aware of until it came to filling the screen wash up so we were like right okay we're gonna buy a funnel and this is the way we're gonna do it so yeah so i'm going to pull my windows up and we are going to go and look in the boot of my car okay you're gonna have to excuse the mess of the boot of my car it is really bad because i have stuff everywhere in here but what i've got is obviously i've got l plates i've had to buy so many l plates because i keep using them i have got the fully magnetic ones they're really good but if the wind catches them sometimes in an awkward like if they're not stuck on properly and the wind catches them they're gone they're just gone as absolute gone as i have two bags of the shopping in my car it's actually quite cold out here I've never used this yet, but I do have a deluxe ice scraper bit for a pound from being there. And it's so fluffy inside and you just wear it like this and you can scrape it to your hands and get cold. <laughs> I'm such a basic person. I'm literally just gonna pop these on the floor so I can lift this next bit of the bottom of my wheel. I then have whip from Wilco's Wilco's own dash wipe cleaners, anti-back wipe cleaners and leather cleaners. I think this is a Wilner. I'm not actually too sure. It came in the golf box of the car. And I don't really know what to do with it. So I've just shoved it in my boot. <laughs> and this is the Williams Racing gift bag that I was talking about. Big solid bag. I'm going to show you what's in it now. So it's a bit like a let's have a look. I have used this to clean my car and it's actually really, really good. I highly recommend it. If you if you have the option to do Williams Racing, I think it's like an extra £300 or something, but it's so worth it. So I get a sponge, <laughs> Sushin, and I also get one of these. Are these like, I don't know what, I don't know what they're called. There's like a little flannel thingy. I don't know. I also then have a little like extra spray cap thingy. And then we come with bird dropping remover which is really random but it is really good you literally just spray this onto like the bird dropping wait a, like a minute or so and then just wipe it off and it's gone literally nothing and also it's really good to get rid of bird poo on your car because it has some acids in it which can damage the um painting and then coating of your car just a heads up there <laughs> i also then have leather cleaner and conditioner so for my leather on the interior i then have glass cleaner this is really good glass cleaner it does not smear and it's so good and it's so easy to use you just spray it on rub it in and then you just pull, buff it with a separate cloth so easy so cool then i have car wash and wax which is really good so for effortless cleaning on vehicles so it gives it a bit of a polish because also having the coat in i don't need to actually um polish is it polish i don't know i don't have to make my car sparkle because it automatically does it once i've washed it because of like a special coating uh i then have fabric cleaner for obviously my seats on my car as well where they're fabric and finally and last but not least i have the wheel cleaner which i haven't used it's got loads of acid in so you have to wear eyewear and gloves and stuff i don't really use it yet but yeah so i can't I can't quote on how good that is but i'm guessing it'll be good because the rest of it's really good the other two things i haven't used is the leather conditioner and cleaner and the fabric cleaner because i haven't needed to use them yet because they haven't got dirty so yeah basically and that is basically what I got in that little kit. It's really cool. I don't know if I can show you. It came like that. Yeah, that's the best we're getting. It came like that, basically. But yeah, it's really, really good. And I was really shocked when he gave it to me. He went, oh, here's your free gift for having the Williams Racing stuff. And I was like, fine. So, I don't know if you can see, but this is my boot. So, they're the back seats. So, it's a fairly decent sized boot I don't know how clear this is because I can't actually see my screen but then if we lift this up we do have a spare tyre and a jack and everything like that which is another really good thing to do with what's up everything I'll talk through so when we were looking at cars my dad was really annoyed at the fact that quite a lot of cars don't come with an actual spare wheel no anymore it's like a space saver so you just fill gel which is great until you absolutely shred your tire to pieces and you can't actually put gel in to stop a like puncture so the fact that this car came with a spare tire was really handy for my dad this is another thing that's solved it Is basically 
exactly it. It is a really, really good car. I highly recommend it. So, yeah. So, if you like this video, I'm, I'm literally going to finish it here because it's really cool and I don't really think I have much more to talk about. So, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you're not already. And, yeah, comment if you have any questions about the car that you want me to answer if I've not answered them or anything because I don't really know what I've actually spoke about in this video. I've kind of just rambled. But, yeah. And tell me what you think to this car. So yeah, don't forget to follow my social medias to keep updated with all my updates and stuff that's going on. But yeah, thank you for watching. If you got this far, well done because it's going to be a long ass video because I don't shut up. But yeah, thank you. Bye.